Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is that time of year again. It is the Sephora savings event. If it's your first time here, then hi, my name is Becca. I'm so glad you're here. I do these series around every Sephora savings event because I like to be thorough. I like to include all of my favorites and I also wanna help you shop a little bit more thoughtfully and intentionally. Some years I create content around new discoveries in the past year and other years I do all time favorites and I felt like this year it was time to do an updated all time favorites. So you're going to see new releases here as well as things I've been loving for a really long time. I also wanna say thank you to Sephora for partnering with me on this video. They're sponsoring this and obviously it's like a dream collab anytime I get to work with Sephora. And I love creating this content anyway. These are all things that I would share regardless because I'm so excited to talk about them. So let's get into it. Really quick, I do wanna share the savings information and I will have everything listed in the description box as well along with links to everything. The code for this savings event is save now and your discount will depend on your membership tier. And of course it's always free to sign up. Rouge will get 20% off from April 14th to 24th. VIB will get 15% off from April 18th to 24th. And insiders will get 10% off from April 18th to 24th. And all things Sephora collection are 30% off from April 14th to 24th. I'm also going to be sharing another video with my skincare, hair care, body care, and fragrance recommendations, so keep a lookout for that. All the terms and conditions and links will be below, and let's get right into the makeup, and I like to go in order of application, starting with primer. For a bit of background, I have combo oily skin. I'm more combo in the winter, but I'm definitely getting a little bit oilier as things warm up. So that's my skin type, but I am going to speak to different skin types throughout my reviews. And I do have a primer, I think, for every skin type. One primer I just just can't stop using is the Charlotte Tilbury Broad Spectrum SPF 50 Sunscreen Invisible UV Flawless Primer. So this is a UV primer. I don't use it as my primary sun protection, but I like to have that extra sun protection in there. This has a slight bit of radiance. It's a lotiony texture. It spreads out so nicely. And the thing that I love most about this is it makes the skin look and feel very smooth. Something about the texture of this glides over the skin. And I especially like wearing this around the high points of my face because there is a little bit of pearliness and radiance in here. It's not anything like the Flawless Filter, which I love and I'll mention later, but it's almost like they took a tiny, tiny drop of that and mixed it into a sunscreen primer. I love that it has high SPF. It's all chemical, so there's no white cast or anything like that. I think this works for all skin types, except the most, most oily may want to avoid this just around the T-zone. Either way, it doesn't break up. Even if you do wear it in the T-zone, it just might add a little more glow. But I actually like to wear this around the perimeter of my face the most because it gives you that like pearlescence and that glow. By the way, I do have a full brand review of Charlotte Tilbury, so I'll link that in the cards if you're curious to explore more from the brand. Another one of my all-rounder favorites is the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip. I avoided this for a long time because I thought it would be too dewy for me, but I was wrong. It's almost like this very thin gel and it spreads across the skin and what it does best is it holds on to makeup all day long without being a mattifying primer. Usually when you think of long wear primers you think of mattification but this maintains glow across your skin. I'm actually wearing this today and I find that it doesn't break down. It doesn't get greasy. Even though it's called Hydro Grip it's not actually sticky on the skin, it just gives the foundation something to adhere to. I like this all over the face, even on my T-zone. I find that it doesn't break up. It does maybe get a little bit shiny, but it's really not a problem if I powder, which I do for long wear days. I just think it's a great all-rounder, and I've also just recently posted a Milk Makeup brand review, so I'll link that in the cards as well. And if you are oily or you're looking for a long wear or you're looking for pore smoothing, you're looking for mattification, this is the one for you. This is the Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Blurring Balm. I just use the clear version. So if you're not familiar with this, this is um, a putty-like balm that melts on contact with your skin. So it's not thick or greasy on the skin at all. It just creates the nicest glide. It like melts and then it glides over the skin. You really do 
not need a lot with this. And I think the trick is using the least amount possible to get what you need. So I actually like to use this best in my T-zone, especially around my nose, around my pore area. And it's also a fantastic eye primer. It holds on to makeup all day long. It somehow does make the skin look really smooth, but it doesn't feel like you're adding a whole other layer of cakiness to the skin the way that some mattifying primers can feel. So I just can't recommend this enough. It's a huge favorite, especially going into these hotter months where I need a little bit more oomph in the T-zone. I'm going to mention setting sprays real quick because I feel like they're all kind of in the same category of makeup longevity and just making the makeup look good. So I have two setting sprays. One is the general setting spray that I would recommend to everybody and it's the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. It's replaced pretty much all of my other setting sprays. If you want your makeup to last, but you want your makeup to look very skin-like still, this will make it last, especially if you spray almost like after your foundation, apply blush, and then spray this. If you have issues with makeup fading, I guarantee you it will not fade. This is so good, and it doesn't make the skin look powdery or it doesn't take away any glow. In fact, it makes the skin look even more skin-like and seamless. If you do need mattification, the Milk Makeup Setting Spray is the one for you, the uh, Pore Eclipse one. They also have a Hydro Grip one if you need a bit more dewiness. This is the one that will lock you in all day long and it will make you look matte. So what I've actually liked doing is I like taking this down my T-zone for long wear makeup days because it also has a diffusing and blurring quality to it. So it matte, it's almost like if you wanted a powdered look without adding powder, this does that. It's the weirdest thing. So I take this down the panel of my, like the center panel of my face, and then I'll take this around my cheeks where I wanna look a little bit more glowy and my makeup lasts all day long. So this is for the oily gals and this is for everyone else who wants long wear makeup. Getting into base makeup, I'm gonna go in order of lightest to highest coverage. So my preferred go-to skin tint right now is the Summer Friday Sheer Skin Tint. I've not put this down since it came out last year. I wear the shade four. It's a perfect match for me. This is the most gorgeous, serum-y, fluid, lightweight skin tint. It's a true skin tint, but it has a very beautiful blurring quality to it. Even though it's not high coverage, it's just enough for me to cover over redness and it blurs over the pores. As you're applying it, and I do like applying it with fingers or a brush, you can feel it start to set down and that setting quality is what gives it that blurring finish across the skin. But it doesn't look cakey throughout the day, it doesn't move around, it retains that um, dewiness on the skin. So even though it stays in place and gets a little bit like grippy almost, it doesn't set into a matte finish. It stays very skin-like and it is dewy. But because it does have that grippy finish, I find that it lasts all day long for me. It's very, very surprising. I think a lot of people will really love this. If you want something in the light medium category, you want something that's easy, quick, on the go, the Merit Minimalist Foundation or Complexion Stick is the one for you. I don't even like stick foundations and I love this one. I've raved about it a ton. I also have a full brand review of Merit. This is a stick that you can draw on your face, blend out with fingers, with a brush, with a sponge even, and it looks so undetectable on the skin. It looks very natural, very skin-like. That's the whole Merit aesthetic, but it has a buildable medium coverage. I travel with this all the time and I often use it as a spot concealer around my face. It just has a really nice grippiness on the skin and I actually love these together. So if I'm using something sheerer, but maybe I wanna cover up some pigmentation or some red spots, I'll just like literally color it on with this stick, dab it out with fingers, and it's so undetectable on the skin that you can use it to spot conceal. It's not going to be your full, full coverage foundation, but it is a perfect everyday kind of base product. And I think it's also fail proof. Like you can't go wrong if makeup isn't your thing or you don't wanna spend a lot of time doing it, this is a great base product for you. Getting into higher coverage, this is um, a high medium coverage foundation, the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin. 
skin. I've worn this a ton. You can see mine is um, very well loved. It comes in a tube with a pump and I wear the shade 6N. It's such a great match for me and I really like this applied with fingers, with a brush or a sponge. Fingers, I find it really like melts it into the skin. It becomes one with the skin. This has a natural skin finish. It can be more radiant if you don't set it, but if you do set it, it just gives you a really nice like satin finish, I would say. It has surprisingly good coverage, so I only really need half a pump for most days. That's what I did today. And it's just a really versatile foundation. You can shear it out for every day. You can build it up a little bit more if you want more coverage. I even use this um, when I'm going out or for special occasions. It's just a very flexible, coverage foundation. And finally, an old classic Armani Luminous Silk. Pat McGrath designed this when she was at Armani Beauty and it still remains one of the best foundations on the market. It's so seamless on the skin, it's fluid, it just creates the most gorgeous satin veil over the skin, it blurs the pores, it just makes the skin look so diffused and soft and gorgeous. I don't know, I I've tried so many foundations in my life but this is one I still come back to. My winter shade is 5 Point nine. I definitely could go a shade up for summer. This is already a little light for me, but there are so many shades and undertones in this range and it's a classic for good reason. And a lot of people do wear this for weddings or special occasions or on camera work because it does make the skin look so beautiful while retaining a natural skin-like look. And I forgot to mention my merit shade is Bisque. Getting into concealers, I have quite a few, but I promise you they're all different and they all do different things. For an everyday concealer, something fluid and soft and easy to use, the Armani Luminous Silk Concealer is also stunning. I wear the shade 5.75. It's a great match for me. This isn't going to be your full, full coverage concealer. This is more of a medium coverage, but I do find it gives um, a really blurred and softened appearance around the eyes around fine lines or crow's feet. I find that it, it doesn't sink in, but it still softens and just diffuses the eye area. So I think this is a really versatile concealer. It's a crowd pleaser. When I want coverage, I prefer a very stretchy, high pigment formula. The reason why I like that is that you don't have to apply a lot, but if you have the right stretchiness in the formula, you can really get that product to spread around, stretch across the under eye, stretch across large areas of the face without using a lot of product. When you pile on product, that's when things can look cakey, especially around the under eyes. So I actually like to go high coverage and just use less of it. My latest discovery is, is not new, but it's new to me. It's the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. I wear the shade 3.5 Sugar Biscuit. This has a really chubby doe foot applicator and I only need a little, little bit around the eyes to really stretch out across the under eye. This gives me really great coverage. It will blank out the under eye area. And what I find so interesting about this formula is that it's so blurring and diffusing, especially when I blend out my under eye concealer like into the pore area next to my nose. I find that it just instantly blocks out the pores. It's really weird. It's also great for around the face as well because it's creamy, it spreads out, and it really, really sticks to the skin. Another favorite that I love is the Dior Backstage Concealer. This also has a lot of stretch. It's a slightly more matte finish, I would say, than the Huda Beauty, but it's not a dry matte. It's more of like a satin matte finish, and I really, really love this. I especially love the applicator because the applicator itself is a little brush. So you cannot over apply. It's great for getting in the inner corner. And I do use a different brush to blend it out, but if you like a small applicator and that appeals to you, it's a great formula. I also love the Dior Backstage Foundation. It's a longtime favorite. I didn't mention it here because I've mentioned it so much, but there's an honorary mention. If you like something a little bit creamier, the Colfi, uh, what's this called? The Main Match Concealer in Rose Rush is fantastic. This is a really rich concealer formula. It almost feels like an eye cream with pigmentation and it also really sticks to the skin. It adheres. I feel like it's, it's moisturizing my eye area as I'm spreading it out and it really, I don't know, I can't describe it. It sticks to the skin. It grips to where you put it. So it's great around the under eyes. It's also great around the face. I really like Colfi. I'm really excited to see more South Asian representation in Sephora and I can't recommend this enough. Finally, if you're like me and you 
struggle with pigmentation spots, maybe you don't need full, full coverage everywhere, but you want to add coverage in targeted places, nothing beats NARS Soft Matte. This is a potted concealer. It does have a soft matte finish, but if you have a dewy base, it'll take on the finish of that base. I love to apply this with a tiny brush or just with fingers and melting it in. You can also apply it all over the face with a fluffier brush and just whisk it around. It's just a miracle worker. It's like an eraser, so you can add coverage only where you need it. But because it is so skin-like, it's pretty undetectable. I don't love this for around my under eyes, but it is is a must have for my face. And finally, for powder, I actually just have one. It's the Laura Mercier Ultra Blur Translucent Powder. This is their talc-free version. The original Laura Mercier powder is great. People love it, but I actually like this even more. I find it to be even more blurring and somehow even more lightweight and undetectable on the skin. I really do not need a lot to set the skin, especially around the nose, the mouth, the T-zone, but it blurs the skin and it it still looks skin-like. It's not overly mattifying, but it does hold things in place all day long. So it's just a really great workhorse in my collection. Oh, one more. This is the Milk Makeup Future Fluid All Over Cream Concealer. This is a medium to full coverage concealer with a great shade range, lots of undertones from very light to very deep. They call this the All Over Concealer. Obviously, you can use any concealer all over your face. I've said that before, but I do find this texture works well for both the under eyes as well as the face. And I generally like to have separate concealers, but if you're a minimalist or you're looking for something that you can use all over, I would definitely go for this. It's also a stretchy formula, so you can just like swipe it on your cheeks, blend it out, blend it out under the eyes and have just like a one and done product. I find that it has a great satin finish, so it's not overly matte, it's not overly dewy, it's just a great middle of the road multitasking concealer. That is it for base makeup. We're gonna get into cheeks, which is probably one of my favorite categories. There are a lot of blushes, cream, powder, liquid, let's get into it. Currently, my most used cream blushes are my rose ink blushes. And if you can't tell, there's a pan in this shade. This is Heliotrope and I'm wearing it today. It's the most beautiful light peach. It's very versatile. It's not overly pigmented. The thing I love about this formula is that I can dip a brush straight into here and stamp it onto the cheeks and it takes no time to blend out at all. It's a very classic cream blush formula, meaning it's not dewy, but it's not matte. It's just right down the middle. And interestingly, this is a formula that has a bit of body to it. Like the formula when you dip your finger into it feels rich and thick, but it applies so evenly across the cheek. It's so easy to get a really diffused look. So that's why my pan is absolutely filthy. The other shade I have in love is Dahlia, and this is a really beautiful berry. It gives you a really beautiful, like natural flushed cheek sort of look. I do use Heliotrope more, and there are so many other shades in this range that I love that I've been lusting after, but I just have to mention them. They're gorgeous, and they're also refillable. A recent favorite in my life is the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Blush Wands. These are a new release. I have one shade called Peach Pop. I'll pop an application here. It's the most gorgeous, diffused watercolor tint across the cheeks. It completely surprised me because I like the Beauty Light Wands, but I like the matte ones even better. It's surprisingly pigmented, it's buildable, and it does set down to a natural matte finish but it doesn't look powdery and it gives you enough time to move the product around, to blend it out, to diffuse it before it sets down. So I think it's a really forgiving formula and it's very, very thin. It's actually very weightless and totally undetectable. I like to apply this with fingers or a brush. I want more shades in this, but I especially think the one that I have, Peach Pop, is going to be so good going into spring and summer because it just gives you that juicy popsicle tint on the cheeks and I can't wait to use it more. If you're more of a natural makeup person, you like something a little bit dewier, something that looks maybe a little glossy on the cheek, the Merit Flesh Balms are the ones for you, and they recently released four new shades. This is my favorite. It's called Fox, and it's the shade that I've been looking for in this range. So these come in like a cute little dome. I actually like to swipe a brush across the surface and then tap it on my cheeks, but you can also swipe it directly on your cheeks if you want to do that. Fox is the perfect 
brownie rose. You can see by the swatch here that it is pretty sheer. So you can see the skin through the formula. It's not ever going to be like a super high coverage sort of blush. This is definitely more for your natural looks. I also really like the two other shades that I have. My most worn before I got Fox is the shade Terracotta. It's called Terracotta. I think it's more of your like beigey apricot shade. So pretty, another great everyday shade. And the other shade that I have and I really like is called Beverly Hills. It's kind of like a classic pink blush. So again, you can see these are sheer, these are more of like a juicy tint across the cheeks. They don't set down, so they are going to stay sort of dewy on the cheeks and they are gonna give you that radiance across the skin. They're not too, too sticky because the formula itself is very thin, but I just wanna mention that if you're not into that kind of formula, it is a formula for the more radiant, dewy lovers. Another recent blush release that I love is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Balm Blushes. This is the shade Jubilee. So this is essentially in the same line as the Blurring Balm Powder. So it has a similar formula. It's a balm in a pan. I actually like to take a brush into this and then stamp it across the cheeks, but you can also use fingers. And it also has that like melty balm quality that really blurs out across the skin. It's a little bit more emollient, I would say, than the um, balm powder, but it creates a gorgeous flush across the cheeks. Again, it's kind of like that popsicle stain look. Jubilee is so beautiful. If you like bright pops of color, I think you'll like a lot of the shades in this range. So you can see how diffused the edges are, how easy it is to blend out. And if you are a fan of the Blurring Balm Powder, I do think you'll really like this. The Milk Makeup Lip and Cheek, I feel like was one of the first cream blushes on the market, at least in Sephora. And they have endured, let me tell you. They've added two new shades, well, three new shades, but two of them that I really, really love. And these are also the shades I've been sort of waiting for in their range. If you haven't tried these, it's also a very classic blush formula. You can apply it directly to your cheeks, you can use a sponge, you can use a brush. There's no wrong way to apply these and they're very forgiving, but they're also buildable in pigment. So I'm. this is the shade Enigma. Again, I have a type, it's a rosy brown. It's a great nude everyday shade for me. And also their newer shade Muse, which is like a gorgeous punch of berry. This looks really good on the lips too. This is one of the few formulas I actually do like on the lips and cheeks. I don't always feel that way, but again, it's just a classic but I like the new shades. They feel really modern and fresh. Finally, if you're looking for something super long wearing, the Danessa Myricks um, Vision Flushes are amazing. This is a liquid blush formula. It comes with a doe foot applicator. My most used shade by far is called Ballet Slippers, and it's a gorgeous, like, I don't know, it's, it's surprisingly coral sometimes but it's also earthy. It really blends out nicely on the skin. You can use any tool to blend it out, but these, because they are so, they're so pigmented and so thin, but once you spread them out, they feel weightless, but they last all day long. They set down and they will really, really stay on the skin. Even the swatches really stay on the skin. So they're great for long wear days, for special occasions or events, if you need your blush to stay on all day, or you can use them as a base for powder blush. They're just very, very versatile. I also really love the shade Nutcracker. I'm running out of places to swatch you can see it's almost like a rosy beige contour. So it has some pink in it, but it's also a really gorgeous sculpting shade because there is that earthy quality to it. So I like that if I want a one and done cheek look, if I don't want to apply bronzer and blush and all that stuff separately, I can just apply this around the perimeter of my cheeks and it looks really good. Finally, I have just one powder blush because creams and liquids are just dominating my life right now. There are a couple of powders I'm interested in. I'm interested in the House Labs. I'm interested in the new Armani blushes coming out, but this is the Gucci blush. It's gorgeous. Obviously it's Gucci. So it's a luxury moment. This is about self-indulgence and having a nice experience. And it is a nice experience. It's very weighty. I love this shade. It's called Rosy Beige. I've done a full review on this before. It's such an interesting shade because it is 
a rosy beige. On some skin tones, I find it pulls a little warmer, and on some skin tones, I find it pulls a little bit cooler. On me, it pulls quite a mauvey nude, and it's so interesting. I actually don't have any other blushes quite like this because it sculpts my face. There, that mauvey undertone like really lifts the cheek, especially if I'm blending it upward. And this is a matte formula with a satin finish. So there's no pearls in the formula itself, but it looks really skin-like and it's very buildable. It's not too much powder all at once. It just gives you the softest, easiest blend. It's, it's almost like a cloud-like whisper across the cheeks. Truly a favorite. Um, there are other shades in this formula that I've been eyeing, but I think rosy beige is like a crowd pleaser. Then I have what feels like a throw back, but it's also very 2023. Glossier is now at Sephora. I have to say their cloud paints are one of their products that have stood the test of time for me. You know, these first came out so many years ago. They really made a wave. So these are liquid blushes. My favorite remains the shade Dusk. I just think it's the easiest, um, the most perfect everyday sort of shade to wear. It's a beigey rose. It has a bit of earthiness to it, so it's not ever going to look like too much on the cheeks. I also like the shade Beam. It's a nice peach. Um, I will say the deeper shades are stunning, but they are very, very pigmented. So you really don't need a lot of product, but it does blend out nicely and you have time to work with it before it sets down. So I wanna mention that because I do think, um, I know there's been a lot of excitement about Glossier at Sephora, and there are certain products that have stood the test of time for me, this being one of them. Moving on to contours and bronzers. I'm gonna start with contours. All of my favorite contours are cream products. I just find they're the most forgiving. They're the easiest to use. The latest release that I've loved is from, again, from Milk Makeup. This is their new Sculpt Stick. There are four shades and just look at the range and the depth of these contours. So the first two light shades, um, I go in between. Lately, I've been using the second shade a lot more, but you can see just the pigmentation and the richness of these shades. I love how inclusive they are. I find that this is a true, true contour, meaning it's cool toned, it's not going Going to pull warm it's not going to pull orange this is really meant to mimic a natural shadow on the cheeks however because there is a bit of red and pink in these undertones i find that it's cool toned without looking dead it's not like I rubbed ash on my face. And I feel like they're really thoughtfully designed. The um, undertones and the pigments in this are true contours without making you look dead. These are like true artistry contours. I know this can be intimidating, but these are really easy to blend out. I can even swipe directly on the cheeks and then blend it out or take a brush pick it up and then stamp it on the cheeks. There are a lot of ways to apply this and you really can't go wrong. So don't be intimidated by the shades. If you're looking for something a little bit sheerer, a little bit even more forgiving, the Danessa Myricks Balm contours are fantastic. I'm wearing the uh, medium one shade today actually, and I find that this is a really nice shade for olive undertones. I am someone that gets really tan in summer, really light in winter, just naturally, that's what my skin does. And the tanner I get, the more olive I get, and I can find it difficult sometimes to find olive undertone contours. Of course, Danessa Myricks killed it. And this formula is sheer and buildable. So it's not ever going to be super makeup-y or super high coverage. I find it's just really easy to work with because it has this sheerness and blendability and flexibility across the skin. There are also like seven or eight shades in this range, also a very inclusive range. And then this product, I think, rides the line of a contour and a bronzer. It's the Tower 28 Sculptino. This is their newest cheek release. And this is a matte sculpting bronzer. I wouldn't say it's a true bronzer because it's not a cool undertone. I think on me, it pulls like a neutral golden. And I really, really like this. That's uh, the shade Getty, which is the second deepest. That's what I use. You can see compared to like the Milk Makeup ones, it's not nearly as ashy, but on me, it's a great sculpting bronzer. So I find it also very forgiving, easy to blend. I like to stamp a brush in here and then blend it out on my cheeks. You've seen me use it before. I just can't stop using it. I also love the slim packaging of all of their cheek products. It just makes it really pleasant, 
easy to throw in your makeup bag. The Tower 28 blushes are much dewier, I find, than this formula. I think they pulled back on the emollients in this formula, which makes sense, and it also makes this a lot longer lasting and a bit more of a natural finish on the cheeks rather than dewy like their lip and cheek uh, products, their blushes. I love those too, but they can be a little bit dewy in the summer, for example, on an oily skin type. So I'm glad that they pulled back on the emollients here, and I think it totally makes sense for a bronzer formula. Moving on to bronzers, I have quite a few. I think they're all different. Let me tell you about them. If you are a natural makeup lover or you like really glowy skin, the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer is so, so beautiful. So this is a very sheer cream bronzer. It has um, a translucency to it on the skin. And there's also a bit of radiance in this formula. It's not going to look um, actually like metallic on the cheeks, but it just gives you the most beautiful luminescence. And once it's on the skin, it just translates as like, as if you're wearing a liquid illuminator with a cream bronzer, but it's like a two in one sort of thing. This is called an all over warming complexion tint. They don't even call it a bronzer because the sheerness just becomes one with the skin. It almost doesn't look like you're wearing bronzer when you really blend it in. See what I did there? And especially if you get a shade that's like close to your natural skin tone or just a shade deeper, it looks so seamless on the skin. And when you turn your cheek and the light catches it, it just looks like you have really good skin. I don't know what else to say. It softens and blurs the skin. It's very, very beautiful. There is a new cream bronzer in town and it's the Freck Face Hack what are these called? The Face Hack Precision Sculpting Bronzer. How cute are these? I have three shades. There are actually five shades in the range and these are adorable. If you like a natural cream bronzer, if you're not looking for something too makeup-y but you want something that's easy to blend out, easy to use, this is the one for you. So I have fair, medium, and medium tan, and there are a couple of other shades in the range. This is a very natural cream bronzer. It's not too dewy, it's not too matte, it's also not too pigmented, so these are really, really easy to blend out. It feels so silky as you're blending it out, and it's very forgiving, so I think if you're scared of really intense cream bronzers or you're scared of looking overly bronzed, you want something that's easy to use. You could even dab this out with fingers. It's perfect. Also, how cute is this packaging? It's like a little chapstick. I think it's so cute. And if you are rouge with that 20%, this comes out to less than $15. So super adorable, just a really nice little compact option. On the opposite end of that spectrum, we have this bad boy. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Cream Bronzer. It's huge. The pan is huge. The compact is gorgeous. I have the shade medium. This is a cream bronzer that almost doesn't look like a cream on the skin. It gives you a really airbrushed and diffused blend and it is a matte cream. So it's not going to give you that dewiness or the emollients of like the makeup by Mario. It's the opposite end of that spectrum. It's like a powdery cream. But that powderiness means it blends out in a really like cloud-like way across the cheeks and it will last all day long. Like it sticks to the cheeks, it sets down and it lasts all day long and it doesn't break up, it doesn't slide around. It looks like you airbrushed bronzer onto your cheeks. It's a really great formula and I think if you need long wear, if you like something a little more heavy duty, or if you have oily skin, this is a really, really great option. Moving on to highlighter, and no, you're not imagining things. I am in look number two of this video. I've been filming lots of application clips so you can see all the different makeup in action. So that's why I look different. My taste in highlighter has really evolved where I really only like liquid illuminators or cream highlighters. So that's why I'm in look number two. For highlighters, my taste in highlighters is really focused on liquid illuminators and cream highlighters these days. I don't wear powders very much, so you'll see that reflected in my choices, and I just have a couple. The first one is the Milk Makeup Bionic Glow in the shade Virtual. This is such a beautiful gel formula. It's very lightweight and it completely sets down. It's totally weightless on the skin. So if you have oily skin or you don't like the feeling of like a heavy cream highlighter, I think this is a beautiful option for you. Virtual is a really beautiful peachy highlighter. It doesn't add a lot of pigment, there's no glitter. It just adds some radiance that will shine through if you wear it under foundation. 
or you can also add it on top of foundation for a more natural glow. I do have to mention Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, shade number four remains such a good shade for me. It's a really nice olive undertone and it's a go-to. I mean, mine is completely busted. It's actually empty. So I plan on repurchasing this personally. I personally like it under foundation as a primer, but I've also used it over foundation. I've mixed it into foundation. It's such a versatile product if you wanna add some pearly shine to the skin. If you love really dewy looking skin and you want the appearance of like a glassy shine or you want your skin to look like you just applied skincare, the Merit Day Glow Stick in Citrine is a beautiful option. It's a balm highlighter. It looks like this and it does stay dewy on the cheeks. So I do have to say that, but it's a thin texture. It's not like a heavy stickiness. I actually like to dab this on with a brush or with fingers, but it does give you the most beautiful glassy shine. It does look like your skin is wet and radiating light and the light reflects off of it. And I find Citrine to be such a flattering shade on my skin tone. So that's it for cheeks. We are going to move on to eyes, starting with eyeshadow. My eyeshadow tastes have changed a lot over the years. I think I'm much more drawn to singles, smaller format palettes, just easier shades to use, although I do love my pops of color. So you're going to see that reflected in my choices, and I'm going to start with singles. If you've watched my channel these last few months, this will be no surprise to you. My collection of Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize cream shadows has grown. And I love these so much. They are a creamy, whipped, moussey shadow. They start out with light pigment, but they're definitely buildable in pigmentation. Some shades are deeper than others, but there is a shade, I think, for every taste in this range. By far, my most used shade is Exaggerize, which has a brown base with a silvery flip or a silver a reflect running through it. So it actually gives you a really wet looking shine across the lids and it's still soft enough for daytime, but you can definitely build it up for evening as well. And these blend out with fingers or a brush really well. For a more fun shade, I have Pillow Talk. And Pillow Talk really surprised me because it actually has a lot of brown in it. It's like a brownie rose and it's more of a subtle satin sheen. So I find it really natural. You can blend it out to a very natural shadow or you can build it up for something a little bit more pigmented, but I find the earthiness of this shade really surprised me. I was expecting something a little bit more pink, but I kind of like that it's more grounded in that earthy shade. The other shade I love is Sunlit Glow, which is so fun. It's a duochrome without much base pigment. So it flips from a hot pink to like a bright gold, like a bright yellow gold. And I find it's a really nice accent shade or a topper. I've even paired it with my other cream shadows here just to add like a bright inner corner. So if you're in the mood for something fun, but like a subtle fun, I think Sunlit Glow is a nice option. And the final shade I have is Walk of No Shame, which is a really warm, beautiful, rusty terracotta. If you like warm shades, I think you'll really love this. It looks gorgeous with like bronze skin and lip gloss. It's a very gorgeous like summer shade. Continuing with sleek, sophisticated, chic single eyeshadow formulas, the Armani eye tints are stunning. My favorite shade is shade number nine. It's called Cold Copper, and this has a taupey base with a silvery reflect to it. This is what I would describe as a shimmer, but it's a very soft, sophisticated, satin-like shimmer. It's not glittery at all. And I find this formula really daytime appropriate. It's great for the office or for more professional situations but you can also use it to sort of jazz up the eye and build up pigmentation if you want to wear it out. I know liquid eyeshadows can be a little bit intimidating, but this is very softly pigmented. It's easy to blend. It diffuses out on the eye really nicely, really evenly, without sticking to where you apply it. And you could really just use the doe foot applicator to apply it and then blend it out with a finger. You know I have to include my pops of color, so I think the Danessa Myricks Twin Flames Liquid Eyeshadows are a perfect way to play with duochromes or multi-chrome or just add a little accent to the lid without committing, let's say, to a really big palette if you're not ready for that but you want something fun. I think this format is also really great. I have the shade um, Obsession, which flips from a deep 
bluish green to a really, really bright chartreuse gold. Because these are such a pigmented liquid formula, you can use them as liquid eyeshadow. You can use them on a brush to kind of create that sculpted line shape, or you can blend out with a fluffy brush for a more diffused look, or you can even create a graphic eye look with this uh, doe foot applicator because you do get that precision. It is very pigmented, so that's why I like it for that kind of liquid eyeliner look. So I think it's just a fun way and a low risk way to play with color and multi-chromes if you're not sure yet if you're ready to commit. Because this is an all-time favorites roundup, I do have some products that are not new but have really stood the test of time and that I reach for all the time, which I think is the highest praise. So first up, I have my Tom Ford quads. These are very pricey, but the formulas are stunning. And if you're a makeup minimalist and you just want something sleek that's going to deliver on formula and elegance, these are the ones for you. First up, I want to talk about the eye color quad in the creme formula. So this is a creme to powder formula, meaning it feels creamy in the pan. These are best applied with fingers, in my opinion. They sort of get creamy as you touch them. And then when you apply them to the eye, they set to this lightly powdery diffused finish. They're such an elegant formula. And the thing I notice most about these is that they smooth over the skin. So once you apply them and you really warm it up and blend it across the skin, it almost looks like satin across the eye. It has a very elegant, chic, sophisticated effect. I I have the tiger eye color story and I find that this is perfect for every day. It's daytime appropriate. I use this bronze shade across the eye on its own all the time, or I can smoke it out for a more dramatic look if I'm looking for that. They actually just came out with a couple of new color stories in this formula, so I'm definitely curious about those. The other formula is not new, and this is their baked gelée formula. So any of the Tom Ford quads that have the TF embossing in them are this baked gelée formula, meaning it's not a pressed powder. So you don't get a lot of powdery kick up and these almost look like a liquid eyeshadow across the eyes. A lot like the creme formula, they're super smooth, they glide across the eye, the pigment is so stunning, they're a little bit more pigmented than the creme formula. And I love this quad so much that I've actually, this is my second one, <laughs> I've emptied, emptied one and I'm on my second one because I, I love it so much and I travel with this one a lot because I have everything I need for a subtle soft look or a more dramatic look, but any of the quads with the Tom Ford embossing in this baked jelly formula, I highly recommend. And then moving on to quince, I have to mention my Dior quince because they have really stood the test of time. I have three color stories. This is my most used, it's called Mitza, and you have a really nice blend of warm and neutral slash sort of cool tones on the bottom. This is my next favorite, it's called Jungle. So you have some neutrals, but you also have these incredible greens. This olive shade is one of my favorites in my entire collection. And all of these quints have a mix of satin, of mattes, some toppers and metallics. So you get a really good blend of different formulas in here. And the last one is called Denim. You wouldn't think of Dior necessarily for a bright, colorful palette, but let me tell you, this palette really delivers on pigment. So if you want to do something fun, if you feel like you, you like blues, and I know there's this like return of Y2K blue eyeshadow, I'm not mad at it. I've reached for this a lot actually. And again, the pigment is just stunning. So so there are actually like maybe eight to 10 different color stories in this Quint formula. A lot of neutrals, warm neutrals, cool tone neutrals. I think if you are curious, there's definitely something for you. Getting into larger format palettes, I have my Patrick Ta Major Dimension palettes. I have both one and two. I'm wearing Major Dimension one on my eyes today. I just took some of the mattes across my eye and then I built up this peachy uh, topper shade and I basically smeared that all over my lid today. It's such a beautiful palette. It's a great everyday neutrals palette. Palette. But there are also really complex formulas in here. You have toppers, you have satins, you have mattes, and at the end of all of these palettes, you also have two cream eyeshadows. So you can use these as a base, but they're also really beautiful on their own. So you can tell they're very artistry designed because of the mix of textures in here. And it's a, it's a palette I reach for often, even though it's just a neutrals palette, it's a really good neutral.
Neutrals palette. And if you want something a little bit rosier, Major Dimension 2 is gorgeous. This shade is also really pretty. It has like a duochrome pink to gold flip, but it's also wearable for every day. I really like the mattes in here. I think they're very nuanced, rosy shades, and of course you have the cream shadows in here as well. Then we're getting into the big format palettes. These are palettes I've loved for a long time. They're definitely for the makeup lover, but that discount can go a long way because these are high ticket items. So anything Natasha Denona, I have to recommend. Whether you like the small palettes, the midi palettes like this one, the bronze, or the large larger palettes like this one, Biba. All of these palettes have an incredible diversity of formulas and textures. So you get your mattes, but she also has a creamy matte formula, and then you get metallics, you get more topper shades, and all of the color stories are stunning. If there's one color story that really speaks to you, I don't think you'll be disappointed. I know this is boring of me, but my most used one is Natasha Denona Biba because I reach for it all the time to support other makeup looks, to just create an everyday look or just sweep one shadow all over the eye. There's a mix of mattes, um, a, some shimmers and some satin shades. And I, I don't think you can go wrong. I've had this for years and I still reach for it all the time. Then, you know me, I am a Pat McGrath lover. And I, even though she's released so many different eyeshadow palette formats, I still think the motherships are her best products and they're what stands out in the market. My most used by far is Mothership 5. This is full of warm tones. If you like that, you will love this. I just find it to have the most versatility for everyday wear, but also for some fun amped up looks. And lately I've been reaching a lot for my Mothership 1. I never thought that would happen because this is full of cooler tones, but I have been reaching for it a lot. I think my tastes are just changing a little bit and I've been reaching for, I think this is Mothership two or three, I'll link it below. This one is full of rosy neutrals and also just like neutral neutrals, but there are also some really fun shades like this green. So if you are an eyeshadow lover, there are any of these that speak to you, I don't think you can go wrong. And I still think her astral shades, which are only in these Mothership palettes, are some of her best work. They're twinkly, they're iridescent, they really catch the light in such an interesting way. And whenever a makeup lover, whenever I encounter a makeup lover in the wild and I'm wearing Pat McGrath, they know I'm wearing Pat McGrath. There is a signature look that comes with these palettes. I do have some dedicated reviews with multiple looks for a couple of the Pat McGrath palettes that I will link below. I also have a dedicated review of this palette. You know I had to mention it. This is the Janessa Myricks Lightwork Volume 4. This is a palette for people who love to play with color, love to play with texture, want to get experimental with their looks. This is the palette for you. There are many formulas in this. There are a bunch of multi-chromes, but then you also get topper shades. You get two chrome flakes and you get two water activated liners. So this is definitely for a certain kind of makeup lover. I know it might not be for everyone, but if you do want to get into color and you want to play, nothing beats this. I mean, it's such a unique palette. I have done like eight or nine looks in my review of this palette. If you want some inspiration or a more dedicated review, definitely check that out. Moving on to mascara, I have a few different formulas for different needs. I really quickly want to mention my Shiseido Lash Curler. It's by far my favorite lash curler. It really fits my eye shape. If you have smaller eyes, if you have a hard time getting into the inner corners or the outer corners, you might want to try these and don't forget the replacement lash pads in your lash curlers. Let's keep it hygienic. Starting with my most natural mascara, I have the Merit Mascara. And I do a full review of this in my brand review, but this is a beautiful, natural, everyday tubing mascara. If you've never tried a tubing mascara, they basically coat your lashes in little tubes tubes and they do not smudge until you remove them with water and they come off in little tubes. And then you remove them with warm water and they fall off in little fibers or tubes. This is a very simple wand. It's not too big, it's not too small. I find it distributes the product through your lashes really nicely. This isn't going to be the most buildable, dramatic mascara. For me, this creates a really nice length, a fluttery lash, and it's perfect for every day and for sensitive eyes. 
I've gone through like three tubes of this and I've also gone through three tubes of this and it's my current most used mascara. It's the Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. You've seen me rave about this many times. This has a curved uh, plastic bristle wand and the bristles are very small and they have some nice space between them so you're able to work the product through the lashes in a really nice way. I find the first coat builds length and then you're able to build volume. It's not going to be your really dramatic mascara. It's perfect for every day for me because it fans out my lashes. I get a really fluttery look. It doesn't drop a curl for me and it doesn't smudge. So I find that it kind of hits all of the marks for me personally. And then if you like a more dramatic mascara, I have two options. I think the Rare Beauty one is a really good balance of length and volume. It's not super, super volumizing, but I do find that I can get a pretty dramatic lash look with this mascara. This is also like my third tube of this. I really do love it. And even though the wand is kind of big, I'm able to work it through my lashes really, really nicely. And I find the formula is very black. It gives me a lot of definition. For something very dramatic, I have recently discovered the YSL Lash Clash. This is not new, but they have released a brown shade, which is new. It looks like a really beautiful brown shade to create a bit of a softer look. This mascara Sarah builds serious volume and look at this wand. It's huge, but because it is tapered, I'm able to get into the corners of my eyes really nicely. I have reviewed this recently, but I'll just say again, it builds volume for me without overwhelming my lashes. So sometimes voluminous mascaras can make my lashes just clump together because they are so fine. This one doesn't do that. It really distributes the product through the lashes. I get a lot of volume, but I don't lose any flutteriness through the lashes, which is really important to me. For eyeliners, I have two formulas. The gel retractable formula that I really love is the Milk Makeup Infinity Longwear Liner. These are seriously budge proof. I think they're fantastic for getting really into the lash line or into the waterline. If you need longevity, these these are the ones for you. They will not budge. You do get a little time to play with them, but generally I go for them for that long wear aspect. For a bit more of like a smudgy look or a smoked out wing, I really love the Urban Decay 24 hour, 24 seven glide on eye pencils. These are not new, but they have stood the test of time in my collection. I especially really love the shades Alkaline, which is a berry purple, and the shade Whiskey, which is a mid-tone brown. I find this is like a milk chocolate brown, and both of these shades really bring out brunette tones and brown tones in the eye. I like to smudge these on and then I use a winged liner to create that crisp line where I want it. So I get that time to play, but once they set down, they do set down and they don't move. When it comes to brows, you know I'm very much a creature of habit. I still use my Benefit 24-7, uh, 24 hour brow setter all the time. I'm wearing it today. I just use this to set my brows in place to create a bit of lift because my natural brows are very downward facing. So if I wanna change the direction of the hair growth, that's when I use this, or if I wanna create a really laminated look in the brows, that's when I use this. And then I'll go in with a pencil, like the Benefit, uh, their Precision, Precisely My Brow Pencil, or the Urban Decay um, Brow Blade. It just depends on the vibe I'm going for if I want something more precise or a little bit softer. So I do have a new product I've been liking and I don't always like a tinted brow gel, but I like this one. Lawless came out with their Hold Up Soft Set Creamy Brow Wax, I think late last year. And a creamy brow wax is a great name for this. So it's almost like a brow cream, but it has the hold of a wax. It doesn't add too many fibers, so it's not going to give you like an overly fluffy look. It just adds a bit of tint and when I have a natural brow day or a natural makeup day, but I want to add something through my brows, but I don't feel like doing the whole brow routine, I'll go for this. And if you like a natural brow look, I think you will enjoy this. And they have a few different shades in this range. The shades are all really good. They're not too warm. They're not too orangey. They just have a nice neutral undertone. And this adds a little texture and a little hold. Moving on to lips. This is a big category. I have lip lines 
liners, tinted balms, sheer lipsticks, pigmented lipsticks. Let's talk about lip liners real quick. You guys know I love my Tower 28 One Liners. There are only three shades of this, but I think they cover most of my needs. There's a neutral pink shade called Fill Me In. There's a nude shade that's perfect for my skin tone, like a brown toned nude, it's called Work of Art. And then there's a deeper chocolatey shade called Draw Me. These are very, very creamy for wooden lip pencils. Usually wooden lip pencils are on the drier side, but if you like something that has a lot of glide and creaminess to it, I think you'll really like these. They're also good for filling in the entire lip. If you want something for longer wear, I would turn to the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencils. My most used are Anywhere Caffeine, I've been using this pencil forever, as well as Endless Cacao, which is a fantastic shade for sculpting the lips. I actually wore it today under the lips stick that I'm going to show you in a bit. It's the kind of lip liner that's not um, detectable. You're going to want to blend it into your lip shade, but it brings a lot of definition and contour to the lips. Starting with the most sheer of my lip products, I've recently discovered the In Beauty Project Lip Glaze. These are not new, they're just new to me, and these are called a lip oil. They are a lip oil in that they're moisturizing the way an oil would be, but they add a lot of shine. So it's, I mean, it's kind of like a fancy lip gloss. The price point on these is fantastic. I have two shades. One is the Mystery Glaze Lip Oil, which is like a sheer pink, and it just makes your lips look really juicy. It gives you actual moisture on the lips. And I have another shade called Froze, which is really fun. It's kind of this frosty pink. It's not overly metallic on the lips, but it does just make your lips look really plumped up and juicy. Summer Fridays recently extended their shades of their Lip Butter Balm, which is a favorite of mine. Their original, is it brown sugar? That one lives in my bag. I wear it, apply it all the time. All of these are fantastic like purse lippies because they actually give you moisture and a little tint. But my new shade that I've been loving is called Cherry. It's a bright red, but it's not overly pigmented. I recently paired this with a brown lip liner, actually the um, Makeup Forever Anywhere Caffeine. And I found that they made a great duo, really flattering together. So if you like this original formula, but maybe you wanna try something just a little bit bolder, a little bit more amped up, Cherry is a great shade. Another lip formula that I love um, and another lip oil are the Merit Tinted Lip Oils. So I have five shades of these. I have reviewed them all in depth in my brand review. They are beautiful. So these are more like a lip serum than an oil. They don't have the stickiness or the richness or the thickness of other lip oils. They're more serum-y, they're hydrating, and they just add a sheer tint to the lips. I have the shades Eau Naturelle, Marrakesh, Cara Cara, Taupe, and Falcon. And I find that the Cara Cara shade is the most pigmented of all of them. I love this in the summertime, but all of these I can wear and just throw in my purse, put on any time. They're very convenient, easy lip colors. And no surprise, the packaging on these is lovely. They have like a square tube with a round cap. Design matters to me. <laughs> so I really like the aesthetic of these lippies. Then I've got my Tower 28 lip products and there are two different formulas. The first formula is their lip jelly and these are their version of a lip gloss. They're not sticky, they're very thin. They do have a slight jelly-like quality to them and they're really flattering across the lips. I think they do a great um, selection of nudes. There's a nude for every skin tone, but my most worn uh, are the shades Cashew and the shade Sesame, which is more of a mauve tone. These are, again, easy to throw on, easy to pair with a lip liner if you want to amp it up, easy to reapply, and I do find them hydrating throughout the day. Their newer formula is a tinted balm, but this isn't your melty, like gooey tinted balm formula. This is slightly thinner and waxier, and I think it works especially well for their deeper shades. So there are four shades. There's a light pink called Shake, a peach called Mix, there's an orangey red called Squeeze, and there's a deeper berry called Drink. I actually find myself drawn most to the deeper shades in this range, especially this shade Squeeze. It's the most beautiful orangey red, which I definitely have a soft spot for. And because this is a thinner formula, it doesn't migrate around the lips. It's actually a perfect formula for deeper shades because you get that sheer punch of color 
without any migration. It's not going to get all over your teeth. It's the perfect formula for these brighter shades, in my opinion. A newer discovery that I have fallen head over heels with are the Hourglass Phantom Glossy Sticks, Glossy Balms. These are push up melty lip balms. So they look like this. You click to raise the product and these are very, very melty. They really do have a way of coating your lips and sticking to your lips, not in an uncomfortably sticky way and they're not gonna like stick your lips together, but it feels like they're coating over your lip lines and giving you a really lacquered look. They are moisturizing and they do have a bit of menthol, which is not my preference, but it's faint and it fades pretty quickly. It doesn't tingle the lips or anything. I have two shades that I love. The one that I wear the most is called Slip, and I find it's a really, really beautiful, like sheer cherry, and it adds a lot of life to the face. The other shade that I love is called Trace, and it's more of a caramely, warm-toned lip. So if I pair it with, for example, a brown lip liner, I find it to be really flattering. And they're both easy to wear, whether I have a lot of makeup on or not. They go with every kind of lip look, and they're just really flattering, and they make the lips look so juicy and plumped up. Getting into my sheer lipsticks now. These are like true lipstick formulas. We're getting into actual lipsticks now, like bullet lipsticks, starting with the sheer formulas. The YSL Rouge Volupte Shine is a product and a formula that I've loved forever. I've emptied many tubes of this. Currently, I only have one shade. It's called Chili Morocco. And these look deep in the tube but they sheer out. They have a beautiful translucency and a gorgeous shine to the lips. They are a thinner formula, so they're a little bit waxier, not quite as melty, for example, as the Hourglass formula. So they're not going to be as moisturizing, but they're not drying either. They just make the lips look really shiny, glossy, almost like a popsicle stain. Then I have to mention one of my favorite formulas from Merit. This is their lipstick, and this is a sheer lipstick formula. So it's not going to build up to high coverage. It's almost like a waxier tinted balm. It's not melty, but it has this like matte balm quality to it that makes it really easy to wear. It's not too much of a commitment to wear during the day. It doesn't slide around. It's not shiny, but it's not matte either. It just has this beautiful natural skin finish. I think their whole range is stunning. So I've got Millennial, which is a new neutral pink, Slip, which is a brown toned nude, La Avenue, which is a brownie berry, Tiger, which is a burnt terracotta, and Cabo, which is a bright orangey red. And of all of these, Cabo is definitely the most pigmented. It's beautiful in the summertime. Since I reviewed these last year, I've always said these are the lipsticks for people who don't like to wear lipstick. So if you don't wanna commit and you don't wanna feel anything on your lips, you don't want anything too pigmented, these are the way to go. Then I have to mention my Gucci lipsticks. I have four of their formulas. I think they're all stunning. They have this real old world elegance to them in a way because of the design that evokes these vintage prints and these vintage designs. They're very like art deco. And they also kind of evoke that feeling of old school glamor when you pull them out to reapply. There is something intangibly beautiful and stunning and attractive to me about these. Their sheerest formula is called their shine formula. And I have two shades of these, um, My Cousin Rachel, which is a beautiful warm peach, and Goldie Red, which is the signature Gucci red shade. So it's like a bright blue based red. It looks good on everybody. I especially love it in this sheer balmy formula because it's a nice way to wear red without committing to a fully pigmented lip. And these are so easy to reapply. They're very melty and balmy and moisturizing. I also love the slim bullet on these. Then we've got the Gucci Shine formula. These are most similar, I would say, to the Merit lipsticks. So if you like those, I think you'll like these in that they're a thin formula. They're slightly waxier. They don't have the creaminess of a balm formula. And they're also not shiny on the lips. They just have a natural finish, but they add a sheer wash of color. And I have two shades, Agatha Orange and Marguerite Jade. Then I've got their satin and their matte formulas. Both of them are stunning, incredibly comfortable on the lips. They're creamy, they last all day, and they're 
fully pigmented with one swipe. The satin shade that I have is called Penny Beige and you can just see how beautiful the embossing is on this tube. Penny Beige is such a cool nude lip. It's a very like yellow based nude. So if you like a kind of grungy, earthy lip tone, I think you'll really like this. And then I've got the matte lipstick in the shade they met in Argentina, which is a beautiful, bright, Coral meets rosewood. There's something very vibrant about this shade, but it's still a very wearable shade and it's one of the few pinks that I really, really love. One of the new lipsticks in my collection is a newer formula and these are the Hourglass Unlocked Lipsticks. This is a very true, classic cream lipstick. It's not matte, it's not drying, but it's not overly creamy. It just has a nice thin weight on the lips. So they come with this gold tube and the little hourglass logo and they are magnetic. I have the shade Tropic, which is a brighter pink for me, but there's something really, um, I don't know, like enlivening about this shade. I find that when I wear it, my face looks really bright. My skin tone looks really bright. And I think I'm gonna be wearing it a lot in spring and summer. These have a bit of like a square bullet. I think you can see here, but there are a lot of beautiful shades in this range. A lot of really good nudes for different skin tones. For a long wearing lipstick, I don't know how Armani did it, but they have done it with this formula. It's not a new formula, but they have recently extended the shade range of the lip powers. So these are really cool. They have this like tall bullet and the bullet itself has a teardrop shape that makes precision application really easy. I'm actually wearing one of these today in the shade 110, which is my favorite of the range. I find that it's, um, a really interesting nude shade. There's a bit of burnt terracotta to it, but it's also very face brightening. I get a lot of compliments and I always get asked when I wear this on camera because it just hits that balance of nude meets a burnt terracotta. But I do have several shades of these and I wear all of them all the time. So I have 103, 108, 110, which is what I'm wearing now, 206 and 507. There's also a huge shade range in these. There are reds, there are terracottas, there's berries, there's brighter shades, there are a bunch of nude tones. So I think if you are curious about these, they're definitely worth checking out. And honestly, one application will last me all day. It has the longevity of a liquid lipstick without being a liquid lipstick. And I don't know how they do it. It really, really lasts. Another long wear formula that I love is newer to me and it's a newer release. They came out with these at the end of last year. These are the Dior Rouge Dior Forever lipsticks. I have the shade 200 Nude Touch. So this is another brown based nude. It has a really caramely undertone to it. And there is something slightly grungy about this if you build it up or if you just wear one sheer layer, you get that nice warm toned nude. I think this is a nude that's going to be flattering across a lot of different skin tones because you can really deepen it with a brown lip liner or you can wear it on its own or you can diffuse the edges. It has a lot of versatility. Again, this is one of those one swipe full pigmentation lipsticks. These are a matte formula. So they are matte on the lips, more matte than the Armani, which is more of like a satin finish. They're a very comfortable matte. It's not going to dry out your lips. It's not gonna get crusty, but this is again, one of those lipsticks that you apply once and it lasts all day long. I don't know how they do it, it also feels totally weightless on the lips. It would be fabulous in red because it doesn't move at all, but they also have a beautiful shade range on these. And finally, the Say Lip Blurs are a newer lipstick formula and newer to me. I have two shades called Data and Classic. Data is like a burnt terracotta brick red, and Classic is like a true classic, like old Hollywood red. These are completely budge proof, and again, full pigmentation, with one swipe. The reason why these are called lip blurs is that you can sort of apply a little bit to the center of your lip and then blend it out with a finger to get that blurred lip look or that blurred lip line that's really trendy right now. But I was actually surprised to find you can also get a really, really crisp lip line with these, which is fantastic, especially if you are wearing a deeper shade like a terracotta or a classic red. 
I'm going to close out with a couple of brushes. I think any of the Sephora collection brushes are fantastic. They have really good brush sets. I know there's one that's called the Complete Brush Set that includes everything you need essentially for a full face, or if you want a single brush, my most used brush from them is the Sephora 56. This is technically a foundation brush. Um, the typical brush comes in a black handle. Mine is limited, was a limited edition like shade, but the 56 brush is so versatile. So it's a pinched foundation brush. You can see it has a small surface area. And I really like this because you can paint on foundation or buff it in. You can use it for concealer under the eyes. And I also really love it for applying cream blush or cream bronzer. This pinched ferrule just gives you the perfect shape for getting right under the cheekbone or buffing out around or on top of the cheekbone. So again, this is a great multitasker brush. It is a brush I use all the time. You can see I recently used it with blush. There's blush in the brush itself. I think you can't go wrong with any of the Sephora collection brushes. And another one I have to mention is the Merit 01 brush. This is designed to go with their complexion stick. So it's really good at buffing out product. It's dense, but it's really soft. It's cut at an angle. I use this with all of my liquid foundations. I've used it with concealer, and I've also used it with cream cheek products like cream bronzer. It's really good for stamping things on. It's just a really versatile, very, very soft brush. And I like that it stands up on its own on your vanity. So that's it. Those are all of my makeup recommendations if you've made it this far. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope this has been helpful. I will be posting a part two of my recommendations with skincare, hair care, body care, and fragrance. So keep an eye out for that. I will link that in the description box. And if you found this helpful, I would love for you to subscribe. I want to say thank you again for watching. Thanks to Sephora for partnering with me on this video and I'll see you in part two. Bye!